The church worldwide, the global recovery vessel reaching millions of vulnerable souls all over the entire world with the voice of Christianity, bringing the message of salvation, healing, teaching and deliverance to the brokenhearted, pointing all believers and non-believers to the resurrected Christ in his full immortal body, which is the church of the living God, the celestial city of the heavenly in Jerusalem. You are all welcome on board with us. Please join us now as Dr. Edmund brings a message of faith, hope and deliverance. You see, this area is so important place. Because I believe that, like, like we said before in prayer, I believe in my mind and my broad conscience that every person that is so attentive to this message must live here today with a Samuel. Amen. I mean, any Samuel you need, you just go with your Samuel. Amen. You see? So here, God shut up her womb. Why? Should be the question. Am I right to say that? <laughs> Hello, brethren. Uh, look at that now. Are we right to say, why should God do what? Shut a womb. And God created her to be a woman. And God shut a womb. Don't you know how to shut the door? What is the meaning of shut the door? Close, Close up. God closed her womb. But the husband loved her. And now, let's go a bit further. If you go a little bit further, you see, and Elkanah, her husband, in verse 8, uh, I mean, I mean, so sorry, it kind of said unto her, uh, Sorry, uh, let me come again. And uh, in verse 8, then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? Why do you weep? And why eatest thou not? Why did you not eat food? She refused to eat food that day. She refused. Not only that, why eat it not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? Listen. You see, when people marry second wives or have women outside their wives, they love the second wife more than the first one for some reasons until the second wife will mess up herself. Then he will regret. Had you I know, I wouldn't have going to marry the second wife but you see new thing is always very impressive people are interested to have new things people as they can change their cloth and use it as a rag in their house sometimes they change wife like that the wife becomes a rag they put that on her side only when they want to clean dirty the, the dirty days in the house they will remember the dirty career. The other one is a champion. It's always like that. New things are preserved. New things are more beloved. You see. But this God is a God of judgment. Nobody knows what happened. But this man began to claim that he was a better than ten sons to the, see, and now all I've been doing for you. I mean, don't, is that not enough to prove to you that I love you more than any, anything? More than ten sons. You're okay without children. You're all right. But if you look at this Elkanah, you see, he was a very godly man. If, as you read the story again, in fact, it's a very good thing for somebody to spend some time in his house and read 4 Samuel chapter 1. And read it again and again on your own. You see, the man was a very godly man. Very godly. But you may never know the standard God has set in this very world, except you are close to God. If you don't read the Bible and study it, you are playing. Don't say I didn't tell you. <laughs> you are just playing with the grace God has given to you because this is free so that's why it's called grace but you have to take your time so that you don't perish in the presence of grace 
you will never know that there are certain things that were obtainable before that God allowed. There are certain things obtainable now that God is allowing. And there are certain things that will be obtainable in the future God will allow. It's always past, present, and future. That's the Bible. That is the reason why we don't use go to market and buy oil, buy candle, buy incense. You understand me? Or look for high soap, buy high soap, or kill ram, or kill goat, kill pigeon, use their blood and make sacrifice like they do those days. And God was appeased by that. But now is expired. So if you do it now, you have you have kind of disdained the grace of god you are telling the lord i have to follow you in my own way so the standard of god you know uh, is triple past present and future so if you apply the the past to the present you have digressed and what will happen in the future you begin to apply it now it's an error just try to know this very serious error so the good god wants you to know him knowing him means knowing his word that's why he says study to show yourself approved unto god a workman who needed not to be ashamed because most of us who are working for the lord we have crown of shame upon us without us knowing it because we are working for god in our own way and that very day we we'll come for reward and say lord did i not walk did i not pray did i not do that he said eh? he'll be looking at you oh you prayed there eh? you walked there eh? you fasted there eh? so you did all this things. get behind me i didn't know you you're not in the list <laughs> you know there's a chorus we used to sing here before song says are you in that number are you in that number something like that uh, it's the chorister that sing that i don't know he said so that is it so there are things of the past things of the present things of the future at the present time people are not allowed to marry two wives your wife can only be cast away when your wife commit adultery in your house or commit fornication if you like you can forgive her and keep her if you can manage if your heart can take it otherwise if you flush her away you are right that's what jesus christ said otherwise your wife is your wife and that is it and even if a wife is doing that secretly and the husband does not know the lord has flushed her away a day will come she will end up because her life will be very short you see so then in the past if you take that david married uh, in fact the beginning of david's life the mar mar david's marital life he began with two women he began with two women <laughs> it's terrible so the same thing with so many people what of solomon that god told Mo uh, david that is going to be the king of israel how many did he marry they say, well, it's terrible now you know the story when a man married like that he's a wicked somebody he say so this man claimed to be more than 10 sons so he wants anna to be looking on him that he is more than 10 sons all right thank god you've seen that so when they've done their feasting anna went into the house of god to pray and to ask god petition to ask god for his, her own samuel she did not eat she did not drink that day she didn't she went to god that's a very good news about anna anna saw the lord better than elkanah he saw the lord better than elkanah the husband you say and um, if i may say as well ladies that are committing fornication now because they're not yet married are married 
they are married though because the reason is that they have given their they have I, I don't know uh -uh. they are eating their own bright price i mean that's it now because when your boyfriend gives you money buys you dress you already the bright price they would have brought to your parents you are the one enjoying it you are your mother your father at the same time you and that's the point now you see so you are married and those things are not applicable in the word of god you see now you're not applicable do not say god give me husband god give me husband why you have a boyfriend who is fornicating with you as a husband and you say god give me wife or uh, god give me husband there are some people having a uh, girlfriends both them their, themselves and the girlfriends no they are not going to marry the husband the wife the girlfriend is looking for husband the boyfriend is looking for wife but they cannot stop sinning a man a woman that is on his way of error against the will of god and you fail to correct him to warn him if that person died because of his sins his blood shall be where say it better eh? his blood shall be where in the gutter where upon your head and upon your hand that's what the word of god says if you go to ezekiel you see that you go to chapter 18 you go to chapter 33 you see it there you go to chapter 3 and so on if the if if, if, if a sinner is taken away in your presence you have all opportunity how much more these children god gave to you from childhood they have they were with you they suck your breast or whatever if you're a man here you have you have, you, you nurse your children they grow in your presence you had all authority and everything and then you let your children be living but when he's coming you're looking at the leg say ah, this boy's leg now wow he get bow leg go ah, look at he's he, he, he do, he, he's grown he's just grown higher than his 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 mate ah the boy had brain hey that girl can read that's all you know and you leave them to satan and you want to go to heaven who told you you're going to heaven who told you now listen people are going to perish for nothing god forbid i should destroy you i will tell you the truth you want to go to heaven you want to go and meet god in, the, in his kingdom whereas you have, you have destroyed all your children for not making them to fear the lord and you want to go to heaven don't you know that some parents they run from one denomination to the other from this they run they, they, with fault finding where would they have chance to impart the glory of the kingdom of the new covenant into the life of the people? That is it. Look at Ekana. Um, better than ten sons. Eli marked the mouth of this woman and Eli rebuked her. He was afraid. May your prayer terrify wicked people. You see, and Eli marked her mouth, according to verse 12, verse 13, and now Anna, she spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, as I said, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought that she was drunk. <laughs> May God give you Holy Ghost drink. <laughs> in order to say prayer and not drink, when they are fully charged in the spirit, the devil know that a drunkard is coming. I'm telling you honestly, because this alcohol is called spirit in English language. It's spirit. Why? Because it stimulates. As soon as you take alcohol, it works differently in the body. It goes straight to the veins. And it will pull it to the brain. And your eye will change. You begin to look at things strangely. The same thing, by the time the Holy Ghost a pause anointing on you after prayer every disease and sickness knows that you're a wicked person they will say the wicked person has come because anointing is wicked to the wicked hallelujah of course yes that's why that demon said jesus i know who again i know eh? where is the paul point point for this pulpit 
Where is the Paul? Eh? Jesus I know. Who else? <laughs> how, how can demons say that when you don't pray? And when you are just praying ordinary prayer. Praying over your shop and over the... Or prayed over that uh, enemy where that woman will not greet you well. And uh, do all those things. Is that prayer? You are supposed to be a general. A general. <laughs> hey. I, what, what, you see, when I take you to certain levels, it's because I'm believing in my spirit that God wants all of us in the same level. God does not want A to be better than B. It's not. Look at our fingers. They're not of the same uh, sizes. Some are thicker, some are shorter, and so on. But they're all very important. You see, then, according to verse 14, and Eli said unto her, How long will you not put away your, your, your alcoholism? Your drunkenness. Put away wine from you. And the woman declared herself, I never drank anything. I never ate anything. That is how you find out whether she ate that day or not. Look at it. In verse 15. Anna answered and said, My Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful heart and all that. In verse uh, 16. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Baliel, for out of my heart I have prayed. Verse 15, let me read it completely. No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunken neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my heart before the Lord. You see, in the process, uh, this man being in that position, he blessed Anna. And said, may the Lord God of Israel, you know, remember you and they give you your petition. That's according to verse number 17, which you are asking from him. And if you see the activity of Anna in verse 18, you see that this woman received it. She believed it. Some today will go and find fault against Eli. So why should they like talk when I, 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 I'm, I'm bitter? He cannot you say a man of God. He's supposed to see vision to know the condition I am. The Lord rebuke him. Lord rebuke him. Lord rebuke him. Lord deal with him. He, because she was bitter. So she'd be more bitter. Adding fry pan to what do you call it now? The salt and injury. Putting salt into injury is terrible. You see but this woman, according to verse 18, said, Let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So she, the, the, the woman went her way and did eat. And her countenance was no more sad. It was only then she ate. She went to God with empty stomach to ask God in bitterness of her heart. She was bitter against the situation. Well, I, I can say that you are right. To be bitter against evil things. But what did Anna do? Anna prayed against that evil. Evil of barrenness. She prayed against it. She was bitter. She prayed against it. Very bitter. There are some people... Their own bitterness is drinking drug. They will drink drug, drink drug, drug. Drug is good, oh. God allowed it. He said the sick can look for physician. Drug is good. That's why I take drug. I, what do I say? Everybody hear me now. Drug is good. That's why I take drug. In fact, I drink drug more than many people. This is my drug. The drug in this book, in the Bible. That's my chemist. That's my clinic. That's my hospital.
<laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you the truth. That is a I I drink drug like this year now. By the grace of God, it means just few, maybe let's say Jude Revelation and the first and second. Okay, from first Peter to Revelation remains for me to cover three times this year. I drink more than anybody. My body is full of only that this drug is not in the human market. It's from heaven. That is it. If it, the Bible says, let me show you that because uh, <laughs> some people say, ah, no be only me. Maybe not to lose hospital, they go. No be that one. Let me show you. Proverbs chapter 4. So that you can see where my hospital is, my clinic, and my drug. You know it very well. I read verse 20, 21, and 22. My son, attend to my words, incline thy, thy ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. Verse 22. Ready to drink. Ready? Read. They are life to those that find them. And what? Help to wear all their flesh. Do you have flesh? What does the word of God say that is held to your flesh? Did he say uh, Panador? Did he say paras uh, Parashit Mark? Did he say uh, I don't know what it the word of he said the word is held to your flesh but let me tell you if you are the one that approaches god less go and be taking drug in the market but if you are in god and god is in you you are inside medicine in fact you are inside divine chemical industry I'm telling you the truth. That is the drug. So, Anna might have drunk a lot of drugs in her life. Because the word of God is spirit and life. She might have drunk a lot. And to no avail. She went to God. She did not take her drug that morning or that day. She left herself empty to go to God to take the main drug. And the word of God is spirit and what again? And life. So the word penetrated. Because the word was God. And God is the spirit. So as she was praying, praying condition change. The high priest was confused. He was confused. The compromiser was confused. He saw her mouth moving. And they saw the eye open. Hey! The heart was an engine house, firehouse, blowing it. So the man rebuked her. I've never seen this style. Don't drink and come to the house of God. Because the man did not know that in the house of God there is a special drink. And the drink in the house of God is anointing. So many die before their time. Not godly, not their time. Not by God's appointment. But by the wish of the devil. Why? Uh, because they are not drinking the right drug of life. You have to drink drug from God. God is a drug. Oh God of heaven, why, why are there miracles then? Why are there uh, divine healings? There you are. No, think about that. You see, well, this woman was happy. She received it. She believed it. That's why I said today you must believe something. I want you to rise up and believe something now with your Bible in your hand. 
because your words the, the the word of god says so isn't it so you are going to pray what do you believe where is the samuel you're asking from the lord today this woman's countenance was no more angry no more sad she was happy because the compromiser who is in the office of god said let the lord god of israel give you your petition according to your desires she said amen she became happy okay now i am in the office of god in the name of jesus christ i want to say may the almighty god the king of heaven and earth the god of the entire universe give you your petition amen. that you have asked from him amen. in jesus mighty name amen. now let me see your countenance let me see you smile a little bit let me see you happy hallelujah amen. now pray now and take it uh, that is it that is what anna did she was so happy pray now and take it take that thing which you ask from the lord your own samuel ask the lord your samuel you want to deliver very peacefully like a hebrew woman the day you're going to deliver and also and tell me what do you what is, where is your samuel take your samuel from the lord Take your Samuel. Take your Samuel. Ask God for your Samuel. Your Samuel is what you are asking from the Lord. <laughs> oh, that power of God. <laughs> the word of God, I tell you. I, I thank God for living his word in this very world. Uh, the word. That is my drug. That is my chemist. That's my clinic. That's my hospital. My doctor, my surgeon is there. That operated on Adam in the Garden of Eden. Oh, Jesus of Nazareth. Rejoice. Because Anna left with her Samuel that day. You are going today with your Samuel. You are going with your Samuel. In Jesus' name, you have received. Somebody shout Jesus in this room. I have received. In Jesus' name. Hey, God bless you as you get seated. Hallelujah. You see, all these things uh, that we are looking into are very interesting, isn't it? But let us see Genesis. Because uh, that area that the Lord shut up the, the belly of Anna, you need to understand it. It's not the will of God to shut up anybody's womb, but it's a lesson. If somebody can say, uh-uh. Does it mean that? Uh, but uh, my husband now, he, he, I'm the I'm the first wife. He never married before. Why is my womb shut? Your womb is not shut up. There could be also obstacles sent by the devil to trouble women's womb. One of them is fibroid nowadays. There was no fibroid story before, but after some years, in the late eighties, it became it's like it began to arrive. Now it became common. The Lord break it down. You see? So it's not all delays to childbearing is caused by God. So you must understand that. But let's see this of Anna by going to Genesis chapter 30. Genesis chapter number 30. Uh, we, let's, let's look into my God. You see, there, 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 there was um, hmm something here which may interest you very strongly to know why god does what he does you see um while you look into that uh, let me see if i can find another reference for you and then we can pray 
and then you go today happily with your own Samuel. Mm, your Samuel is knocking at the door of your heart. Then what are you going to do with that Samuel? Will you leave your Samuel behind? All right. So, um, and uh, okay. Now let's see verse 2 of this Genesis 30. Let's see, begin from verse 1. And when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, but the, the sister he, or Leah was having children, Rachel envied her sister. That's what happens in polygamous home. I tell you that things that happened before, I said that before. They don't happen now because this is new generation. Jacob married two sisters of the same mother and father. But now it is called the sin of incest. Yeah, I think it's in that group. You see. So he, he, she envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children, or else I die. This woman died on timely death because of her mouth, her word. She died on timely death. When she was producing Benjamin, she died. Because she did not ask or apply her request in the, in the appropriate manner. Yes, he did not. Give me children then, before you know it in verse 2, Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. It is not good for a man of God to be angry with somebody. Don't offend somebody called man of God. That's why a man of God should not be angry at all. Because the anger of a man of God can cause damages to somebody. If man of God is angry with somebody, the person's way will be zigzag. It's true. Because I remember when I went to Babani's center, the present place there now, one man with a red garment was dragging the land, trying to take some part of the church land. Nobody was around. I was in the office. They brought the report. Nobody to go with them. I said, let's go. We go there and the man said, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. That's their captain. That's their captain. Yes. As the man was coming, that day there was a little shower of rain. And there was a little puddle of water. You know, he was trying to cross that one. He could not. He fell down. Number one. He got up. He was very angry. He fell down again, number two. He got up. He was angry. He fell down again, number three. The man went back. He didn't continue. Now, some few days later, the man died. You see, that's why if somebody is a man of God, he mustn't be angry with people. Uh, because even the Levites, the Levites, before the, the priest among, uh, among them, so they use ram or he goats the bible says they they do sacrifice for themselves first and then for the others those that can have compassion for the ignorant those that can say god forgive them for they don't know what they do that should be the priest of god that should be a servant of god you say so this woman died on timely death rachel because she was angry and that death was following her. Remember the woman who told Elisha, the man of God, don't lie to me. Eat your food and go. Is it because myself and my husband are cooking for you? You say, I'm, by this and next year, I will have a, a, a son. I've seen many of these false prophets. I didn't know you are one of them. <laughs> Maybe she didn't say that. But that her word is the package. Don't lie to me. And she went away. And she conceived. <laughs> Being an ardent barren woman, she conceived. 
and gave it back to baby. Before you know it, years later, when the boy knew how to call mommy, daddy, the boy died. She went, he, he sought for Elijah. He was in Mount Camel. He went and arrested him and said, Today I'm going to die with you. Did I ask you to give me son? Didn't I say that all this magic? I was happier the way I was. You must wake up that boy. <laughs> the man of God went and they woke up the boy. Called back the spirit of the boy. The boy sneezed and came back to life. You see that? That is called man of God. Man of God was not uh, angry. Said, well, you know, I told you, this is, this is your sin. Uh, because you called me a liar. So what can I do? You have, you have to pay for your sin. No. A man of God is not a judge. There is a judge already. So he went and consulted with God. The spirit returned and the child became a human being again. All the blood that died, everything that died in the body woke up again. So you can understand that. So you see, in this, in this aspect, Jacob was angry. And his anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, Am I in God's stead who had withheld thee from the fruit of the womb? Am I God who shut up your belly? No, I'm not. See what happened. See chapter 29. Now, If you see verse 29 as well of the same Genesis. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter, Bilha his handmaid, when he was giving Rachel to uh, Jacob as a second wife. You know, he gave her a nurse or a, a nanny, an au pair. In verse 30. And he went also unto Rachel and uh, he loved he, he went on to Rachel and he loved Rachel also eh? he loved also Rachel what do you see there eh? more than Leah and, uh, and again and what do you see there and served for him yet seven other years listen who was the first woman there the first wife Leah, is that right? Okay. When Jacob got the, the, that was his wife. That was the one he was there for. But he was deceived and given another one. The father said he must pay the dowry for this one. If you need her. That's why he served. That time they served. So, for seven years and took Rachel. He loved Rachel the second one more than the first and the lord shut up her womb <laughs> the lord shut up her womb well in the process you can see now the person the love quarrel has come his anger was killed against her according to what we read in chapter 30 verse 2 it say what is this this is a lesson for us to learn Listen to this very well. Amen? This is a lesson now. The first one we read in Samuel. Hannah, who shot her womb? God. Eh? God. Did God still bless her or not? Yes. Well, if we go further, you see Rachel. Whom God shot up her womb? He shut her womb up because of a lesson. I want to tell you now. At the end of the day, he's, she still got a baby. He was the, she was the mother of Joseph. The great Joseph of the Bible history. The Joseph the Lord used to establish Israel in Egypt before he brought them out. That Joseph you had that ran away from a wife of Potiphar whom brought his brother sold that was the mother and Benjamin this Rachel 
But let us learn a lesson. Why did God shut and the Lord open the womb of these second wives in the Bible? Is to teach people in this world and in the generation of the new covenant that read the Bible that the door to second marriage has been shut when your wife is alive. Are you understanding? The door eh? to what? Is what? Shut. So, but why he opened their belly is because he didn't hate them. He's only, God is a teacher. He only used that to teach us lesson. So, the door to second marriage is shut. So, if you are in your marriage and your eyes are outside and you're watching, like a woman that goes out to meet other men in fornication and adultery and is marrying her wife, her husband, that woman is called a polyandrist. She's practicing polyandry. Polyandry is in the family of polygamy. So that woman is married more than one husband. It's the same only that he also doing like a man because some men keep women outside. They don't want the wife to know. The same thing some women keep some men outside. They don't want the husband to know. The reason is that the man you know, you know, get plenty money. So in work no good. In work no good. And as a lady, you have to dress well. You have to be fine and there are so many men that are ready to dress women outside and if you see their wives they are like a chinese monkey oh yes let me tell you if you know let me give you some if you have an ugly wife here by mistake you don't know the woman deceive you you want to marry her let her your eye open you see that she's so ugly and when the woman greets you, money, sir. He just said, Money, inside your heart, say this ugly ape. Wait, God deceive me here. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. Take your wife to a boutique. Take your wife to a fatting room. <laughs> Anything you like, you see women wear buy it and put it on your wife after a short time your wife become the queen of the city that thing you call ugly you can beautify it whether it's ugly or not you don't marry finish you that is the truth <laughs> Listen, the same thing with, with, what is applicable to man is applicable to woman. That man is your Samuel. That woman is your Samuel. You have maintain what you have. And when this woman delivered the baby, he gave that baby to the Lord because she vowed for it. Is there any important thing you are looking for in life? That's your Samuel. Why don't you make a vow today? And tell God, this is so difficult. If you do this, I'll give it to you. Over to you. I don't need to give you the words you use for vow. You know what to do. Hannah made vow to receive Samuel. Let us rise up. Amen, Amen brethren. Amen. Are you ready to receive Samuel today? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Do you know that if you are ready, God has been ready before you. What do you need? You need promotion, good employment. Was that? Let me see whether that man is available. Because it happened many times. But one man here, whom I, I prayed for, he told me he worked in, uh, uh, in VI or something. 
I didn't see the man. But there was a day the man gave testimony here. They sacked everybody. Minus the man. His name, his name was in the list. I want to use him for example. Where is that man? Are you there? Maybe you go to work on Sunday with that man. The man is not there. He would have told you. He was the only person that was left in that place. You see, one of the, one of the brethren who contributed eh? the daughter's around. Uh, it's okay, but it was the man I needed. You see, this carpet, one of the brothers that bought it was that man that sister came to give testimony about. He came from Abuja and they told him no way that he's terminated. But I'm telling you, he got, I don't know, maybe he made some vow, but I'm just using that as an example. He was one of those that bought the carpet. And uh, we prayed to the Almighty God. Maybe he made a vow. So if you make a vow, are you making a vow to me? No. It's to God now. So uh, he might have made a vow. And uh, maybe he's fulfilling his vow or not. I don't know. And you were here. The man is, the, the testimony is still in the, in the video. Not only that the man was called back to work, every other one sacked, he was promoted to become a manager or a director. Hallelujah. Is that correct? Or not? How many of us were here that day? All of us. Uh, look at that. Tell new ones who don't know. Those who don't know that God is good. So, I don't know whether he made a vow. You see, your vow draws you to God. It draws God's attention to you. Because when you make a vow, there's a covenant. There's something, you know, on the cooking between you and God. God wants to fulfill his part. Haven't you seen that person who, that was last week, testified. He made a vow. And he forgot when the blessing came. And things began to damage. I think that woman said, who was here? That, um, hmm. How did she give that testimony now? Uh, I don't know. You know yourself there. And he, she, she remembered, I think that's a lady. He remembered the vow. And uh, gave God that vow. And um, things changed. The son did what? Oh, the son that was sacked. Oh, that's a good memory. Was recalled to work. The next day. What was that vow she made? She... Eh? Oh, deep freezer. And she brought the deep freezer. Does it... Is, can, is, where is that deep freezer now? Adekoya. Is there any time God will go to Adekoya to go and drink uh, water from deep freezer? You see how God is working. She made a vow of deep freezer. God was watching. God just needs your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. He wants you to stand by your word. Not changing what you say. Then you become the corridor of power. You are going to pray. Why not you put, try God today. Make a vow between you and God. Don't let anybody know that. Because we're asking God for a Samuel. Your Samuel will come. Uh, prayer. Prayer in Jesus' name. Prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Prayer in Jesus' name. Prayer in Jesus' name. <laughs> prayer in Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> oh my God. Prayer. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> ah, God is a faithful God. <laughs> God is not going to decoy her to go and drink water or, or to freeze a chicken. No, but the Lord is good. <laughs> Prayer. Oh my God. Prayer. 
Ah. Ah. Thank you. Prayer. Prayer. Get your Samuel today. I said, get your Samuel today. <laughs> My God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, don't forget we are in this season of upside down. What has happened to the barrenness of Hannah? Somebody shout upside down. Upside down. That thing turned that woman upside down. She was left in continuous sorrow and agony. She was left weeping all the time. She was left as object of caricature. She was mocked and cajoled by Penina. You may I know that when you want to talk, Penina say, "Shut up, shut up, shut up." Why are you to talk to me? Go and talk to that uh, my. Go and talk to that my daughter. She might have suffered many rubbish, and the Lord turned that situation upside down. What is that thing that have turned you upside down? You are rejoicing today. But just because of your faith. But there are some areas things are so hard for you. They might have come from your ancestral curses. The wars that your forefathers fought and shed much blood. And cursed followed the family and the children. And you're suffering some difficulties. You don't even know where they come from. Anything you don't know at all. That is your problem. No, you don't know about it, but is your problem. There is somebody that knows about it. Yes. And that is the Lord. So, that thing must be turned upside down. Amen. Somebody shout upside down. upside down. That's what it is. God will turn it upside down. So, you are going to pray against any area of difficulty, the one you know, the ones you don't know. The ones that are yet to come, the ones that are come to turn the family upside down. So that it will be the family of, you know, you don't know that house where uh, that accident happened. They, they, they caught the two legs. You know, that house, that, uh, the Lord rebuke it. I said the Lord rebuke it. You are going to be angry in this prayer. Because when you pray in bitterness over something that will bring you down, because it's not the will of God to bring you down. Anything bringing you down is not from God. You are going to bring that thing down. Because he that dug the pit shall fall into the pit. Pray in Jesus mighty name somebody. Prayer. 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 Prayer in Jesus mighty name. Prayer. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Prayer. Prayer. you break that chain break it by the power of the holy ghost break it break it oh my god 
break the chain 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 the chain that burn you break that chain I said break that chain I said break the chain the chain that bound you break it break it break it break it break the chain let it be that is turned upside down the Lord break them down Oh my God. Oh my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Fire them up. Turn them upside down. 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 The Lord rebuke them. Scatter them. Scatter them. Scatter them. Your own Samuel has come. Welcome Samuel. Welcome Samuel. Welcome Samuel. Oh my God. Ah oh, Lord, look at that. Look at that. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. They must be turned upside down today. Don't let it, don't let it escape. It will never escape today. It won't escape today. It won't escape today.
in the name of Jesus Christ you have prayed the prayer I say you have prayed the prayer hallelujah anointing anointing singing anointing 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 it breaks the yoke anointing 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 no na anointing anointing na anointing 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 na From heaven, anointing, anointing, praise anointing, praise the yoke, anointing, praise the yoke, Praise the Lord. He's a friend of you. He's a friend of you. Anointing, anointing, praise the Lord. 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 Anointing
He knows something. Now, you see, you are going to pray. Someone shall pray. Someone shall pray. Shall pray. Shall pray. Shall pray. Um, you know that you are going to pray that God should anoint you that any problem coming to see that anointing shall turn upside down without you praying it will happen pray in Jesus mighty name You must testify. You must testify. You must testify. You must testify. You must. You must testify. You will testify. Oh, that power of God. Look at that. Oh Lord, anoint your people. Oh yes, Lord. Anoint your people, Lord. Release your power. Release your anointing. You are the most high God. You are the most high God. You are the Elohim. You are the El Shaddai. You are the wonder. You are the wonder. You are the glorious God. You are the leader. The doctor of heaven. That works wonders on earth. Help that family. Help that mama. Help that house. Help daddy. Yeah, Thank you, Holy Ghost. Of Jesus Christ, you are prayed. You know, you have to make sure that you become one of the kingdom partners with the apostle, partners of the kingdom. So join the rest, register yourself in the reception. You know, you are going to pray and thank God for all the prayers you prayed because your someone has arrived. There is Samuel in your hand. Yeah. You have your Samuel. Yeah. Where is your Samuel? It's in your hand, eh? 
Huh? Where is your Samuel? Ah, uh -huh. so uh, thank God for Samuel. Thank God he has arrived now. Samuel, don't come up. Samuel, don't come up. Huh? He didn't look at me, Abby. Your Samuel's arrived, eh? Oh, yes. Uh huh. You need Samuel too? Your Samuel's arrived. Okay, let me just. Your Samuel has arrived. Mm. Your Samuel has arrived, eh? Your Samuel don't come. Your Samuel has arrived. Uh huh. Your Samuel is there. Your Samuel has come. Your Samuel has come. Uh, your Samuel has come. Mm. Your Samuel has come. Uh, take your Samuel. Take your Samuel. <laughs> take your Samuel. <laughs> take your Samuel. Take your Samuel. Uh, I say your Samuel has arrived. Yeah? Your Samuel has come. Your Samuel has come. You have your Samuel. Hmm? You have your Samuel. Uh, are, you, are you ready for your Samuel? Eh? Your Samuel has come. Your Samuel has come. Your Samuel has come. Uh, your Samuel. Don't let your Samuel go away. Your Samuel has arrived. <sighs> your Samuel has arrived. In a mighty name. Of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now open your palms, precious God Almighty. I pray over the church. Thank you for your kingdom mysteries. I know that the devil will enter into his agents to be judging us because of our liberty. We have received our liberty and nothing can change it. Amen. Because if you make someone free, it's free indeed. Amen. We are free Amen. from upside down. Rather, upside down shall be turned upside down. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You have also released anointing. Amen. You have given us good knowledge. Amen. We have seen that uh, uh, things expired and there are some things present. Uh, may we be in the present. Amen. The present tense is that you will live according to the whole life you will live. Amen. Nothing will cut your life short. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You will live as God wanted to live. Amen. You will never die before your time. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You will live as long as you will live. Amen. Nothing will trouble your life. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You will live and God will bless you. Amen. As you live, God will keep on blessing you. Amen. All your family will turn to God. Amen. Everybody in your house will turn to God. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lord Jesus, I pray that everyone here that used to be hungry because of no money, now money follow you. Amen. Money will follow you. Amen. Whether you understand it or not, money will chase after you. Amen. If you are too smart to run away from that money, it will overtake you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let it be that the mighty hand of God will protect you where you live, Amen. where you walk, Amen. where you tread. Amen. Envy and jealousy can never stop you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Some people somewhere here is to get a house. You see, that's some people somewhere. They want to get a house. Receive your house. Amen. Some people somewhere is what to, they want to get baby. You're not only going to get a baby, you get babies. Amen. Receive your Samuel. Amen. Every vow you've made before the Almighty God, may the Lord honor them. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let the hand of the devil leave you alone. Amen. Because you are in the hand of God now. Amen. God has taken over. Amen. He has taken over. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Be filled with the Holy Ghost! Yeah. Be filled with the Holy Ghost! Yeah. <laughs> Let everything that is called sickness forget you. Yeah. Only the good health of God will remember you. Yeah. The Lord will always remain your doctor. Yeah. And this medicine which I used to drink, may the Lord give you. Yeah. May your flesh fear 
and may your flesh be saturated and let it be that nothing will share your flesh with god your flesh will be healthy because the word is held to their flesh receive good health receive good health be free from troubles from police from soldier from strangers in the night in the day be free from trouble in jesus mighty name let the mighty hand of god be upon you in jesus mighty name fear shall fear you in jesus mighty name because of anointing i said because of anointing in jesus mighty name thank you father for answering in jesus name we do pray again hello do you know you can access our messages testimony and prayers on your mobile devices always log into recoverychurch.tv connect to any of our recovery services and our live streaming the church worldwide international preaching the gospel of our lord jesus christ always log into www.recoverychurch.tv and you will surely be blessed moment of recovery